Well guys, welcome back. Yeah, we are not in Southern Iowa today. We are we are actually on the Kinzenball farm. We're going to harvest some grain with John and Susie today. Uh, we get to check out the 1121 as it gets running around here. I, I, needless to say, I'm going to try my best not to be too giddy. You know, I, as a kid, uh, ever since about 2004, we, when we moved up to kind of Cedar Rapids area, uh, we'd always drive past, past the plant on the way to the farm. And if you told me on that day uh, when I was a kid that, hey, someday you'd be harvesting grain with those guys, I, I, there's no way I would have believed you. No way. You know, so this is... Uh, this is definitely really cool. So if you would, before we jump into the video, take a second here for us, hit that thumbs up button, uh, and say thank you in the comment section to, to the Kins and Balls for letting us come out here and experience in a day with them. <laughs> Let's get to work. So YouTube, if you don't know who this is, this is what you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm Susie Beach. Uh, uh, president and one of the owners of Kinsey Manufacturing in Williamsburg, Iowa, and also we have a family farm operation. And uh, how many days have you guys been harvesting? Uh, since Monday. Since so Monday? So this is day three. So you guys don't have any radios in here? No. Nope. So, so that means you got all the hand signals down again? <laughs> yeah, mostly. Uh, yeah. Connected. And, and cell, like cell phone call for yeah. a while. Uh, you yeah. should be over here already. <laughs> how was the growing season? Good. Yeah, you know, it, it's we've got property here in Iowa County and in Johnson County near our residence, and it, it was interesting just in a 30-mile uh, area of separation how different the rainfall was this spring and summer. We had, you know, almost double in Johnson County what we had here, so this is a lot drier, uh, you know, than, than the Johnson County ground. So we're pulling the 1121 behind us right yep. now. Yep, we got the 1121 behind us here, and uh, this is actually our marketing machine that I believe we had at Farm Progress show here a couple months back. We're just we're using it as well as a single auger 1051. So we got a dual auger and a single auger. So will you tell us about a little about the 1121? Yeah, so the 1121. Uh, this is actually the first fall that it's it's in farmer hands as far as production. Um, it was uh, our old. Uh, 1050 that we had years ago that we resurrected it was uh, I think we discontinued that around 2013 I want to say when we introduced the dual corner auger series yep. and um, you know there's there's it, it's interesting as you look at product segmentation you know there's almost something for everyone a lot of farmers talked about really loving it's the perfect size range you know that 1100 bushel and so we looked at it and said you know there's a place for this in our lineup to bring it back and we've made a lot of improvements to it. The improvements we made are the result of feedback and, and in product enhancements, you know, we had made it on our carts yeah. since we discontinued that. We've got the dump gate, we've got um, the higher side board with the hydraulics, you know, the hoses, those are coated for easier hookup. Um, and of course tracks, uh, flotation tires, and then we've also got the, um, for this next year, bringing back the row crop tires because a lot of our custom harvesters really yeah, like, like the row crop so, tires. So we have row crop on our 1040. Okay. So we got the, before the 1050 actually, oh, okay. so we got the row crop. Yeah. But running the tracks last year, I'm really, really impressed with tracks on the grain cart. The, the stability of the cart, mm -hmm. the compaction factor is, I ran over an egg. It was like, <laughs> I saw Full, that. I saw you. Full, and it was, and that it did barely cool. even, it barely even cracked. Good experiment to do. So yeah. it's like it really yeah. with the cart um, tracks are. I really like that. But we weren't, weren't we saying that you could actually buy like a tired machine and then change the tracks later yeah. on with this series? Yeah. So um, the the sides are now the same. You know, whereas before you had to have a, a different side configuration. You know, for like a well tires, for a wheel. The, the wheel well. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. So. Um, so now they're standardized, so you can do either. So you can order one with the tires and then do an upgrade if you choose to in the future yeah. tracks. Yep. If uh, YouTube, uh, you, would you introduce yourself to YouTube for anybody that doesn't happen to know who you are? I'm John Kinzenbach, and I'm from Williamsburg, Iowa. He is uh, an agricultural legend. Um, 
and it's an honor to sit in the combine with them. That was the spring and everything. Well, it was very, very dry, and uh, I planted this in uh, April before that hot weather started hitting us. And uh, then, then I finished corn two weeks later down in Iowa City. I've got a farm down there, but uh, this farm, it, it grew. I've never seen such an even crop around this county. It looked even and it was really, uh, usually you wait at tassels to get rid of the blunders and, and all that. We just didn't have any bad spots anywhere. It, it seemed like everything grew. But then we ran out of water and I thought we'd be lucky to have 160 bushel. And I'm sitting here running over 200 and 19% moisture. You gotta like that. So did you have uh, any of that corn? We had some corn come up in seven days this year. Do you have any of that stuff? Yeah. It, I was planting with that high-speed planter, and it's a good thing I had a high-speed planter down in Iowa City. It was 90 degrees, and I had to keep going faster because the corn was coming up and plugging my seat tube. Here, but I 250 here, fairly new, and then I wanted a bigger one, so I bought it. Uh, I was not expecting this thing to yield at all. And the hill over there, where it would look like it was burning up. Over on the clay hill, I come down here and it was still doing 200, 170, 200 bushel. That's what I said. I uh, saw you unloading on the over the hill over there, and I was like, hey, he didn't make it too far before that hopper started showing yeah. corn. That must be okay corn. Was it as, like the spotty range? We had lots of yeah. spotty range. Oh, yeah. You got some beautiful corn here. Yeah, the old one. Do you like showing corn or cutting beans? Oh, I don't mind either one. Since we got the new stripper here, the new uh, flex heads. I don't mind the beans. I used to hate them, but anymore we've gotten such good air conditioning and filters. You see that out of the dirt. First time I cut beans, the kid didn't have a cap. And oh, I man. The, I remember the bean popping off the sickle and hitting the eyeball. That's where I wore glasses. <laughs> I remember that as people talk about it. I'd seen it happen. Going back to stay out of the way. Uh, yeah. Walking around. I don't worry near as much about spelling it's not my corn anymore. <laughs> what you're saying, it's the combine operator's job to dump it out the hog or two. Yeah, it's the yeah. cart operator's job to catch it. That's right. <laughs> Dual auger versus your single auger. What are you what are you liking about the, the dual auger? On the on the dual auger here, of course you got more capacity. The corn is yielding well. Um, combine's ready to unload pretty frequently. You can unload faster into the truck with the dual auger. I don't personally care to unload the You're not full gate. Fast. You're not a full no, gate person. No, I don't. So last year I, I told Susie this, but when the engineers came out and uh, saw how the 1421 was running and stuff one of their first questions always to me was are you running the gate fully open and i always said yeah i was told to run the gate fully open uh to see if it could handle it and it handled it yeah. but it moves a lot of corn <laughs> <laughs> they wanted that complete test <laughs> the wheel cart you get a little more of a balance going across something like that I'm gonna take a wild guess and say you've done that before. <laughs> yeah, just a few times. <laughs> um, this cart, you know, that was the 1050, this was the first cart that I learned to drive as a kid, probably when I was seven, eight years old. Learned to drive it, you know, initially with um, my dad or another adult in the cab, and then probably by the time I was 10 or 12, you know, driving by myself. So th this one especially has sentimental value to me, since it was the first one that I learned on. That sounds uh, about so, right to me. Yeah. It's like once you, yep. once they, once they have confidence <laughs> that you can take it out of there and into the truck, it's. <laughs> yep, that's you're right. on your own now. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Thank you.
how did you learn all your mechanical skills and knowledge? Just, just, doing it. just taking things apart yeah. as a. Yeah. I didn't. My folks wouldn't buy the toys I wanted, so I built my own toys. They wouldn't buy a go kart, so I built my own. They wouldn't buy me a scooter, so I built my own. A lot of that stuff did you learn? What does they say? Necessity is the mother of inventions. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. I tried to build my own go kart once too. It didn't work so good. Oh yeah. No. This one had three-speed transmission on it. And I rode it all over the neighborhood. I couldn't figure out the steering. Oh, really? Yeah, I couldn't figure out the steering. Oh, that's the part. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, hey, I that was yeah. that was a pleasure. Nice that was a very well. Uh, Run into you sometime. Maybe right. maybe I can talk them in to let me come up and take a tour of your track. No, maybe. Yeah. Maybe. You don't know that. <laughs> that was right, you'll pretty have handy. To, You'll have to school me here. So right. yeah, you aren't getting stuck so, in the middle. Yeah, Is I this don't know. That's the one spot. There's one. There's two. There you go. Now you got it to there. Uh, Much better. Nope, I didn't fix so it. So maybe see if you can do it that way. There you go. Is that where you want it? You just okay. you just had to fiddle with it. I knew you could figure it out. Maybe. It was a test you passed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the speed that, dial. Yeah, that's the speed dial, and you can see it up there. So you put it in F1. All right. And then you don't, you know, you don't even have to clutch with these. You, you can, don't. you can if you want to. Is that one of the things. So when you they people interview at Kinsey, do you give them the weird uh, brain teaser questions? Yeah, not not usually. But, not usually. But we could, yes. <laughs> Rose there. Hopefully we don't get Stray a Rose. What speed does he like? The three well, miles you said? Yeah, he's been running about three once you get under the spout. There, especially on flat land, you got to watch a little bit on hills. Look at this, guys. They're uh, they're getting me to unload in a waterway for the first time. <laughs> we wouldn't want to make it too easy. No, no. Okay, I'm, there's through two eight, two six. Yep, he's he's gaining on you. Yep, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, trying. There's three six. Oh, but it's dialing, and I'm not moving the throttle. That's why. He said something to the tune of, it's his job to push the corn out of the spout, <laughs> the grain cart operator's job to catch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. You'll have to tell me what your remotes are. Okay, so one is your auger. Put unfold your auger out. Okay. Yep, it unfolds it, so. Two me? Yep, you can put that out. And then two um, is your flow gate, your open and close okay. on your gate. And then three is your tilt spout on your auger. Uh, you know probably more like a thousand but it's it's pretty accurate to its number this one you can overload a little more you just be aware the steering's a little different in reverse yeah. oh, yeah. on these i'll try not to back it up i'll just and then so <laughs> if you need to back up you can flow gate is uh two yep two yep there you go oh, okay yep, so pull I, back is on and yep. push forward is i got off. you then you can adjust your spout a little bit if you need to there we go well, I can get out of your guys' hair so you guys can pick some corn. Okay, it was, well. It was truly yeah. a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming out. Yep, you're in was, park, and it's nice was, visiting with you, and thank you. tell your family thank hi. You. Well, guys, uh, I think that's it for me. I'm going to head south. That was uh, a really cool experience. Thank you to the Kinzenball family for letting me come up here and harvest with you guys today. Thank you for letting me bring YouTube along. Uh, I was impressed with 1121 and what it was doing keeping up with some really good corn. So if you haven't yet, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button on the way out and uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Okay, okay, where do I keep that list at? Where do I keep that list? Um, oh yeah, the, the, the bucket list is in the bucket. Okay, today, we're in line. Harvest corn with Kinzenball family. Say, we're just tired of talk. But, um, well, we can give that one a big old check mark. I guess that means we're on to the next ones here. So, hey, yeah, Tom, hey, guess what? Uh, I got this idea. Top Gun 3 takes place in Iowa. Uh, crop Duster has to fight off uh, some evasion. Uh, I think I got your guy for the pilot. You like it? Yeah, me too.